All right, this is a short video to show that you can also track some uh, rotating objects. So I'm going to move my video of a turntable in here. This is a turntable that's just um, kind of slowing down under its own friction. And here it is. Now, I shot this with a handheld camera. And so if we watch it, you'll see that the, the center here moves a little bit as I wobble while I'm filming. And so the first thing I want to do here is tell it where the center is in the whole in the whole video. So what I'll do is I'll create a point mass. In fact, before I do this, I'll just tell it a couple of other things. I don't this this video is quite long. It's 378 frames. So if I make the step size 10, that means that I only track every tenth frame, which means I'll only have to do 38 or 37 instead of 378, which makes it a little bit less tedious. Uh, and then the next thing I'm going to do is track that that middle point. Um, so I'll call that mass A, and then I'll control shift, and I'll just click on this middle here, and I'll just search for that in all the frames, and it's going to track the middle of the turntable throughout all the frames. And this is just the random motion in the x direction of my poor camera work. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is under coordinate system is create a reference frame that is centered on mass A. So now I have a reference frame centered on mass A. So now if I play this, um, in fact, I'll just add the axis so you can see. The axes will remain centered on on that reference frame. Or actually, it was mass B, wasn't it? Whoops. Okay. So I had used the wrong one there. Mm, mass B is the one that I want to center it on. So let's see. Now it should remain right on the center. And it does. Cool. So now I know that any, any angle that I measure will be about the center. Now, the next thing I want to do is track this object here. Now, unfortunately, uh, this video wasn't very well shot in a number of ways. One was that I was a bit unsteady with my hand. The other is that this blob here um, isn't small enough really for me to track. Um, I can try to auto track it. So I'll call this, this will be mass A. And mass A. And then I will take this thing. Here maybe. And I'll make it just a little bit smaller like that and point. I wonder if I can make it... Okay, let's have a look and see if it'll find it in every frame. It will not, so I'll ignore that. Mass A, and I'll clear the steps. So on this one I'm gonna have to track manually. So instead of using Control Shift, I'll just use Shift. And I'm gonna find the center of that one in each of these 38 steps that I've got. Okay, so now I've tracked all 37 points um, for mass A. Now I can have a look and see what that data will show me. So I'll go here to um, rotation angle, for example. And obviously mass B isn't rotating, that remaining at the origin the whole time. But we can see that mass A is rotating. In fact, this is now X and T, so I'll go rotation angle. We can see that the angle is increasing. We have a, uh, it's, it's kind of flattening out. Um, if we look at the angular velocity, we should be able to see something. Yes, we can see that it's decreasing, and um, which suggests an angular deceleration. It's maybe not perfectly linear. And I think that the alpha one, because the alpha uses three points to figure out the acceleration, is usually pretty messy but we can see that we have an angular acceleration that's sort of centered somewhere around minus 4 maybe, minus 4, minus 5 radians per second per second.
this this um, graphing system isn't very good. Um, so what I thought I might do is just show how we can export this to another um, a graphical analysis software. And there are a number of them available. Um, I'm going to use the Logger Pro one. So if you click on this table here, we can choose which variables we want, right? So we want time, theta, and omega. There we go. Copy. There we go. And there's our data. Okay. Now I'm going to, instead of plotting, in fact, I'll just rename these. This is time, t, and seconds. Y is um, angular, oops, angular displacement. And that is in the short name of that is not beta, it is, uh, what is it, theta, and the units are rad, done, and the this is the angular velocity, and the short name for that is Greek lower omega, and the units are rad s and then we have superscript minus one done okay and now what we'll do here is plot angular velocity versus time and we'll just auto scale that up like that then we'll analyze and then we'll do a linear fit to that Oops. and here we have a nice downward sloping graph and we've got the angular uh, velocity here is going to be, sorry, the angular acceleration here is the slope of this line, which is negative 4.161 radians per second per second. Okay, so there are all kinds of things that we can analyze um, for rotational motion too, um, using tracker. And it's nice to have this um, moving reference frame option if you've got a, a slightly wobbly film that, that you want to use. Um, okay, so I hope that um, clears up how to use the rotational